listening to season six of the Devoted Dreamers podcast, where we talk about our God-shaped dreams. I'm your host, Merit Onsa, and in this new season, I want more than ever to point you to God's truth to help you move from uncertainty to action in your God-shaped dream. We will begin each episode with stories of women just like you who have learned to listen to that still small voice of God, who have found the courage to take their next step and have trusted him along the way. But you need to know that this show isn't about hustle or doing more, working harder or being better. Nobody needs more of that. This show is about experiencing God's grace and learning his love for us in the midst of the labors, dreams, and ambitions he's given us, and all the challenges that come hand in hand with those. So whether you're starting out, or maybe even feeling like the years of dreaming are beginning to run out, whatever your dream and the doubts you're battling along the way, you need to know God sees you. And there's a beautiful passage in Ephesians 1 that I keep coming back to, where our gracious Father reminds you that you were created and chosen for a purpose in order that you might live for the praise of his glory. So whatever might be standing in the way of your dream, whether that's something deep inside of you or something external, God has a plan for you, his daughter, and he is with you in it. And I pray that you will know those truths a little deeper today as a result of this conversation. You can always connect with me and the other listeners in my Facebook group or via my Instagram at MeritJO or as a patron of the show. Everything you need to know, including the show notes, can be found on my website at MeritOnsa.com. And now, here's today's episode. Hello, Devoted Dreamers, and welcome back to the podcast. So excited. I always say I'm so excited, but every time I talk to somebody new, I'm so excited. Today's episode is, um, it's number 131. We're here in October, though I'm recording this much earlier than that, but I can't wait to introduce you to Anna Sackett. She is 19 years old, a recent homeschool graduate, She's a middle sibling to four protective and crazy fun brothers, which that sounds crazy to me, (laughs) but she has a really sweet story. I discovered her via her mom on Instagram, and this is just going to be a really fun and interesting, unique conversation. So Anna, I just want to welcome you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, I appreciate that you said yes to this stranger who was like, can I interview you? (laughs) So please just, um, if you want, tell us a little bit more about yourself, but really, if you want to get to the nitty gritty, what is your God shaped dream? (laughs) Yes. So I, you mentioned that I finished, I'm a recent homeschool graduate. So I just finished about a year ago and kind of took a gap year to help transition and really figure out what my dream was. Mm -hmm. Um, And then honestly, you asking has been really sweet and given me the freedom to kind of think of it and label it as a dream because I really hadn't been so particular about things that I'm doing next and tend to be serious. But anyway, my my current dream is to become a midwife and serve on the mission field while I'm studying. So God has really um, given me that desire in this past year um, of a break, and I will be moving to the Philippines to study midwifery there and work in a clinic. Which is so amazing that this is even a thing. So... <laughs> You are going with part of as part of an organization, and they are teaching you to be a midwife and letting you kind of have this hands on experience. Is that right? Yes, it is. So, I will be working with other midwives who are believers and kind of doing an online program where I'll get my degree and they will be, they call them preceptors. So they'll be teaching me and then all my clinical requirements will be met by just like working there. 
That's amazing. So does that kind of like shorten the process since you're kind of doing both at the same time? It does. There's, um, there's two routes to becoming a midwife. One is going to nursing school first and the other is it's called direct entry. Um, so that's what this is, but it is, it is a lot quicker. This program It's about two and a half years. Wow. And I think you were saying to me earlier that a year ago, or maybe you just said it here a year ago, you didn't know what you were going to be doing a year, Mm -hmm. like right now. So this came about quite suddenly. It sounds like it did. I was looking, I kind of knew, well, talking with my mom, honestly, just like what could next look like Mm -hmm. and um, talking about some of my passions and loving family and babies and um, being around several midwives throughout my life. And um, as I looked into it and then found the, the program in the Philippines, the Lord was kind of like, okay, this, this is for you. Mm. How did you come to that? I mean, you're 19 years old. How did you just come to that place of knowing this was it? Um, it really was God. And it took, um, looking at my last few years of what I've experienced and gone through and, um, just, just knowing, well, really being in the word a lot and knowing that I don't always, I don't always know the exact thing that I'm supposed to be doing, but as I keep taking a step He's just going to say, okay, yes, keep going, or no, that's not exactly it. But mm. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's how I've experienced it, too, is that sometimes you just have to try things out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so we are recording in August, and at this juncture, you have like 30-some days before you depart. But by the time we listen to this um, – it'll be like two or three weeks into it. So what do you expect to experience in those first couple of weeks? Oh, uh, well, what it will look like is a lot of cultural adjustment. It's a whole other language. Mm-hmm. So a lot of, wow, I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm insecure and I don't know these people, but um, a lot of humbling is what I expect and just, change from the way that I'm living. It's very quiet for me right now. So it'll change and be very fast paced. Um, Mm. Yeah. And so you'll be there for two and a half years. Is that about what you expect? Okay. And then what do you expect the kind of the mission portion of that to look like? Like, are there uh, like, will you be going into people's homes or, you know, a little bit, a lot of it, um, as far as I know, it's hard to know without being there, but from what I've heard from the director and the girls, a lot of it is work in the clinic and um, having checkup days where lots of women come in and getting to talk with them and interact with them and their families and their other kids and building relationships with them. Uh, during their pregnancy and while assessing their health. And then I think we do a lot of outreach to the town around us too, going to people's homes to follow up after their deliveries and things like that. Mm. Is there something that you're like, like a component of this role that you're really excited about? Uh, Definitely, definitely the birth and interacting with women. I've always loved watching women and the way that God made their bodies to nourish and to provide for kids and their families. And so it kind of all goes together, the medical side and then the missions as well, just like making relationships at a time in someone's life when a lot of change is happening and a lot of joy. And so I'm looking forward to studying the health side at the same time of that. Mm. Well, I don't know if it's different for Filipino women, but I will say like the word that comes up for me in having a new baby and remembering that window is tender. Like Mm. it's such a, 
tender season where you're really vulnerable, your body feels weak after you've mm-hmm. delivered a baby. And I just know that the people who came around me, I had such a appreciation for them because I was, you know, at the end of myself, I had nothing else to give. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I really, um, yeah, I kind of like want to be a fly on the wall there. (laughs) Well, even you saying that makes me excited because there are two sides of it. There's the mom who's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And then um, what I'm looking forward to experiencing, which is that encouraging side, like, you can do this. God made your body to do this, but mm-hmm. also like um, it being in awe of what he made it to do and just saying, wow, you're a wonderful or you're going to be a great mom. And Yeah. Oh, so cool. Okay. So I'm fascinated and infatuated with birth <laughs> as well. We could just talk about that, but that's probably a different podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd love to have you talk about, um, just kind of some of the struggles and challenges that you faced along the way. Like I know you said that this is kind of a new um, idea for you about moving into this season. Um, Mm -hmm. But what else has been, um, what have you had to face to kind of get to this place of moving toward the dream? I I've had a few struggles for sure. Like all of us, but probably the biggest change that really shaped the way that I pursue Christ the past few years. Uh, Our family moved from Florida to New Jersey about five years ago. And that was just a huge change in the dynamic and the way that we live, but also the culture. And to shorten the story, I just, I really walked through a long season of waiting on God for friendship And it's already hard settling in when you move somewhere, but we had come from having a lot of um, Christian families around us, just people who love the Lord. And uh, I was young, but I, I was really blessed by the friendships that I had. And so um, I guess the whole, that whole journey up until now has just been kind of a slow struggle to trust that, God would bring me out of that waiting, but more like satisfy me with himself even and going through different things like wanting to stay inside and not socialize and even silly things. I know it's cold where you are, but the winter is really hard for me and very sad. I love the sunshine and I love Florida and I love being hot, but um, I was looking through some of my notes from my journal and just really longing for friendship and longing to not be cold and sad anymore. But I wrote, I really need to let the Lord use physical things to show me himself. And so as I was looking for more and longing for more, just knowing that Christ is the only one who's going to satisfy me truly. And um, I, I learned and still am learning to really take those times of longing and use them to rejoice in who he is and that he is unchanging, even when my circumstances are not what I want them to be. So yeah, and I mean, any th- anybody listening who maybe hasn't been through a similar experience of moving, I mean, could probably even relate to that longing and loneliness maybe in something else or, um, yeah, that it's not just about your physical place, right? Mm-hmm. That there was a deeper need there and and he showed himself to you. He did, yeah. Which is so sweet. So... Um, what else did you learn through, I mean, it sounds like you're on the other side of that, at least a little bit. (laughs) Kind of, I think with uh, moving forward and kind of having a season of more change coming up, it definitely looks like that. It's been long and slow, almost to a point where I didn't even realize that he's been teaching me 
that. So yeah, I guess I kind of am on the other side of it, but it kind of happens in a way that you don't realize because he's just always there and slowly like, mm-hmm. yes, keep following me. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what did that look like for you um, as far as pursuing the Lord, being in his word? Like how did, how did things shift in that season of loneliness? Um, a lot of it was about being bold. And I think I mentioned it kind of like just didn't want to interact with people anymore or be outside of the home. I'm already an introvert, but I, um, I really had to be bold and be confident and make choices to be obedient and get outside the home. A lot of it changed when I got kind of a big girl job at a grocery Mm -hmm. store, honestly. And that changed a lot of the way that I look at relationships and just being with people and Mm -hmm. having to make the choice to pursue relationship and be bold in my faith and not just show up and leave and go back to solitude. But definitely being in the word changed me a lot. And part of that was God giving me that quiet time to have the time to be in the word. And I realized that that played a huge part in it too, of just having that silence and not doing nothing with it, but seeking after his word and listening for him to say, this is the way keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you were going to share with me a couple of scriptures that have been impactful to you. Mm -hmm. Um, if I can share two. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> One of them, um, 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty seven, And it says, Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. So through the gospel and through Christ's sacrifice, Therefore, I am to be steadfast and serving and kind of like, why do I keep going? What's the point in this? The point is that God sacrificed so much for me and I need to give him glory. And that comes from being steadfast in every season, even the ones that I don't particularly like or are quiet. Um, and then the other one is Hebrews ten thirty nine, And that's, it's actually kind of like my theme verse for this whole trip and in moving and in following the stream, but it is, we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their souls. And all of, all of Hebrews is kind of my favorite book, but in chapter 10 and before those verses, it talks about, drawing near to the Lord um, and then holding fast to our hope without wavering. And that kind of ties with being steadfast and holding on to our hope because God is faithful, not because I can see what's next or not because I know what to do or what the dream is even going to look like, but um, holding out for what he has, which is ultimately eternity. But each step just, being steadfast and saying, okay, God, I'm going to keep going. And he says, be bold. And I say, okay, or I mess up. And just kind of like a pattern over and over of listening to him and having faith and being steadfast. Mm, I love what you said about um, having that hope, even though you can't see what's Mm -hmm. next. And girl at 19. I had no clue about that. So, wow. Um, I, that's a huge encouragement to me um, and a reminder that it's really not about our circumstances. Mm-hmm. It feels like it is, it does. but it's, it's not really about that. So yes. And when we focus on the circumstances, I'm sure you know this a lot of the time, we don't have joy because as humans, we aren't satisfied with being here. If we're honest with ourselves. And I learned that too. I went through a period of time when um, my mom and I 
it seemed like every time we talked, it was like, okay, but where are we finding joy? It's in Christ, even though this is not satisfactory. And we, we just long for something more, which has been placed in us by God. It's the hope to be with him one day. We have to rejoice and continue to be thankful. I mean, it's a mystery, right? Like Mm -hmm. that he puts that longing within us and then it, it is going to remain unsatisfied until we're in his presence. And that is really hard. Mm -hmm. Really hard. That was Paul's whole Mm -hmm. thing in Philippians is not, he made me so honest. Like, I don't want to be here, but I know it's better for the people and it's God's will. I'm pausing the interview for a quick second to tell you about a fun opportunity for the month of October. I'm partnering with Laurel Denise, creator of beautiful handmade jewelry designed to inspire and encourage. She was a guest earlier this year in episode 117, and we decided it might be fun to connect Devoted Dreamers listeners through the wearing of a simple piece of jewelry that will encourage us toward our God-shaped dream. For me, I think it's going to be one of Laurel's leather bracelets with her petite handwriting. The one I'm leaning towards has the word beloved. But if that one doesn't speak to you, I know she has one that will. Daughter of the King, Be Brave, and dozens of other options at laureldenise.com. Just use the code DEVOTEDDREAMERS at checkout, and a portion of your purchase will support my work on this podcast. And at the same time, you'll be supporting a fellow dreamer. Go check out all the beautiful options. That's L-A-U-R-E-L-D-E-N-I-S-E.com. Maybe even grab one for a friend to cheer her on toward her God-shaped dream. Shipping is always free, and remember the code DEVOTEDDREAMERS. Can't remember all that? Well, you'll find a link in the show notes and in the description for this episode on your podcasting app or via my Instagram at Merit J-O. And now back to the show. Is there like a disappointment or failure that you'd be willing to share about as you've kind of walked this path of discerning the dream and trying Mm -hmm. to be satisfied despite your circumstances? (laughs) I think it comes from especially at my age, I know I'm so young and a lot of girl, well, a lot of people just struggle with that. Okay. What's next? And kind of was tied with being content and I'm very analytical and I am like my dad, I get paralyzed and I have to make decisions or when there's no decisions to be made. But I struggled with that paralyzation and being content with what I was going through. So what happened was any, any new relationships that I came across, I, they would become shallow because I just didn't want to pursue it. I just wanted to kind of wallow in whatever it was discontentment, but really what I wanted inside was to be able to relate to people and connect with them and worship the Lord together. But I really missed out on the chance to worship God with people and to evangelize because I just wanted to be at home where I didn't have to handle those things or handle my emotions. And I, I wanted other people to see that I was content, that I could do this, that everything was okay. But what I really should have wanted for them to see in me was just a satisfaction in God's character over and over. I don't, I don't just worship him because back to that circumstance thing, not just because life is good or I know what's happening next, but because of the gospel, because I've been redeemed because God loves me and I don't, I don't have to have it all together or be as equipped as I think I should be or know what I'm going to do after high school in my case, but, um, I just, I need to praise him and I need to be honest with people. And I think that's definitely missing in this next generation and in our society right now is being honest and saying this, this isn't satisfactory and I don't know what I'm doing. And is this the right thing to do? Is this the right dream to have? Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, Instagram makes it kind of hard to it does. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> to really know like that that base level honesty. Mm-hmm. But anyway, well, 
what is um, a piece of advice that you would offer to other women who are thinking about taking a next step toward their dream or trying to figure out that boldness piece that you've stepped into? What would you say to them? I would say to remain steadfast. Um, Faith, at least what I have learned in this past season is it's a long journey of being obedient. And even though it was only four years and I'm only 19, I can come up with all these excuses, Mm -hmm. but it's going to continue to be long throughout my life. And um, our hearts need to be content in Christ and we need to acknowledge what he's done for us before we can really use that and love other people well or pursue what he has for us. And because ultimately it's his dream. It's really not something that I so cleverly came up with, but um, mm-hmm. he will, he will make us steadfast if we look to him for that. And one of my favorite verses I wrote down is in Lamentations. Probably a lot of people know it, but the Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the Lord. Um, That comes off of talking about being steadfast and um, the Lord's goodness in being patient with us when we're kind of like looking around like, what do I do? (laughs) Um, But yeah, I would say, be steadfast because God is steadfast and ask, ask him to make you that way. Ask him to give you a zeal for the gospel and an understanding of what he's done, because that will make you bold in evangelizing and going after what's next. Amen. That's right. When we believe the truth, mm-hmm. it will, it will make us bold. You feel empowered by it. It's like, wait a second, this crazy thing is true. <laughs> Yes, that's me like all the time right now. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, I would love to have you share just any um, books, podcasts, other resources that have just supported you in this journey and that you think might be helpful to others. Mm -hmm. So I narrowed down to three books and one podcast (laughs) and a lot of reading time on my hands. Well, not as I get closer, but... right. actually a woman that is kind of my mom's mentor right now was really sweet and she passed down um, a lot of her books. She was a missionary with her husband for, for several years overseas, but she passed down a bunch of books and a lot of them have really encouraged me. But um, a, one of them is by Elizabeth Elliot and it's called Let Me Be a Woman. And it's about Eve and when Satan tempted her and said, um, you'll be like God. And so Elizabeth Elliot kind of says, what if Eve had instead chosen to be a woman, chosen to be who God made her to be? Mm -hmm. Um, So I really enjoyed that one. And another book is When Life and Beliefs Collide, and that's by Carolyn Custis James. And she paints kind of a picture of not mustering up our faith, but really digging into theology and what we know of God. Um, and that's encouraged me a lot in this season of keep saying it, but what do I do next? But his character, I just keep looking to him. And so I love that book. Mm. Um, Seasons of Waiting by Betsy Childs Howard. Um, that one, it's, it's a pretty short book, but she really talks about worshiping God without expectations of our dreams. So like in the waiting, it's not because we want the waiting to be over. We expect him to fulfill that, but knowing that he's faithful, even when it doesn't look like what we think it should. Mm. Awesome. And then, yeah. And then the podcast is Journey Women Podcast, which I know that you had Hunter yeah. on and talked to her. I loved that. Interview. She's awesome. She is awesome. And so I just love, she interviews women too and talks about um, biblical womanhood. Mm. Yeah, that is a great show. Yeah. Love it. 
Awesome. Okay. Those are great resources. I will put all of those in the show notes. And let's see you, I would love to have you share like how people can connect with you since you're going to be overseas and there's maybe some people who might want to follow your story. Me yeah. being one. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a blog and that's probably where I'll most um, keep people updated. And that's just my name. It's anasheree.net. And so I'm hoping to put, I do a few right now, but I'm hoping to keep going and put more up and talk about stories, what God's doing. Um, and then I'll also have a newsletter that I'm going to do and you can sign up for that. Um, and then my Instagram, I'm hoping to post on there too. And that is Anna.sack. It's S-A-C-K. Okay. And Anna with two N's. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and let's see, you have this little t-shirt fundraiser. Hopefully that will still be going on uh, by the time this goes live in October. You want to share about that? Yeah, that has, it's a t-shirt that I made. It has, um, it's like a circle with the Philippines in it. And then it has the Hebrews 10 verse that I um, shared, which was of those who have faith on the front. And so that's also on my blog. There's a little tab at the top that says t-shirt on it. Awesome. And it's super cute. That <laughs> that actually may have been like the thing that got me digging deeper oh into your stuff. <laughs> uh, no, I love it. So uh, I think you said that while sizes last, people can still get those if they want to support yes. you in your time there. So yeah. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And do you want to share about your small habit tracker printable? I can, yeah. That's also <laughs> on my blog. I kind of made it with all the free time I had, but, um, it's just a little habit tracker and you can print it out and fill in things that you want to keep up with and check off throughout the month and kind of see how God is making you faithful in the little things that add up to the bigger things. <laughs> I love that. So you were using that for your own habit tracking? Yes, I was. I kind of started it and then my mom loved it and she was like, oh, will you make me one? And so I did. And then she was like, okay, you have to post this. Sweet. That's great. I love it. Okay. I might go grab that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been super fun and um, I will so look forward to the stories of your time there and, you know, know that it's not all going to be perfect, but um, we'll certainly be praying for you and, the women and the babies and everyone that you're going to get to interact with. It's I know. really Can't wait exciting. To make relationships and yeah. That. Yeah. Well, will you close us out with just a little bit of reflection on, as you look back on God preparing you for this dream and giving you the dream, like how has he changed you in the process? Hmm. Well, definitely, um, I keep talking about finding that exact thing that would come next when it looks really unknown. But I've just learned, um, instead of viewing everything as something that I have to know the outcome or I have to have control over, um, just pursuing God has given me a freedom to love others well. And when I, when I take the time to read scripture and remind myself of what the gospel really is, um, he's, he's gone to great lengths in saving me and sending Jesus to redeem us. And that changes my mindset and knowing that he's, he's not going to stop short in my life to bring himself glory. He's already, he's already done so much that he will work through my weakness and um, incapabilities or ignorance. And um, he, he's already laid up the crown for us. And so as I look to him and his example and what he's done for me and remaining steadfast to me, my joy will come in worshiping him and growing alongside other people and um, yeah, just loving 
loving him and loving his appearance and then loving others because of that. If you have ever struggled to find joy in waiting, and I suspect many of you have, this was the episode for you. So having talked to Anna before her departure, I have social media proof that she has landed in the Philippines, but that is about it. She hasn't posted much. So please be praying for her. And if you've ever traveled by yourself, if you've ever been abroad by yourself, you know that this is no small thing that she's doing. In fact, I want to just pray real quick for her right now. Jesus, we are asking that you make your presence known to her, that you would bless her training and her ministry, bless the mamas and the babies that she gets the chance to know and meet and love, and we pray that they might come to know you. Amen. So as always, I like to share a few takeaways from the interview, and here are just a few. So number one, finding hope. Not because you have clarity on your dream or you've, quote, discovered what's next, but finding hope in Jesus because of Jesus, because of his word, because of the gospel. It's such a sweet reminder. And I loved hearing that from her as she was about to head out on this adventure that she's on right now. Okay. Takeaway number two, that when we are longing for something more, rejoice because you've been redeemed. So I totally relate to this. I am so um, prone to want something heavenly, really, to want something that's not of this world. And I don't necessarily think of it that way. Um, but it's, you know, whenever I'm just like, ah, things just aren't good here, or um, I'm struggling because I wish I had more rest or more time or whatever it is. I can rejoice because I've been redeemed, because I'm not home yet, but I will be. The promise is true, and it is for me, it is for you, and it is ahead of us. It is to come. Okay, finally, takeaway number three, how Jesus will make us steadfast if we look to him. And the importance of remaining steadfast. I love that word. And I looked it up because I wanted like a dictionary definition for it. And it is that um, we would be firmly fixed in place, not subject to change, not shifting like the sands. And we can only do that in him. As I said just seconds ago, like I'm constantly looking to something to satisfy me. But to be steadfast in Jesus and that I don't really have to do that, that that he does that for me when I look to him and ask him to be that for me. It is such an encouragement, especially in the midst of busy seasons of life and trying to pursue a dream and um, knowing that there are things to check off the list um, that I'm never going to be able to do it all without him. So they these were just such great gospel-centered reminders in this episode. Thank you, Anna, for that. I'm so grateful. And, and we are praying for you on your journey. And I just read a sweet review of the podcast from just a few days ago, and so I wanted to share it with you here. It's from Piano Shelley, and her title is A Godsend. She says, this podcast has been such an incredible encouragement to me as a busy mom, business owner, and dreamer. I've always felt such a tension between dreaming, God's sovereignty, and how to be ambitious without leaving God out of my plans. This podcast has been a constant encouragement to press into Jesus, seek God's glory, and then watch as God reveals the steps to achieve my dream. Knowing there are so many other women out there who struggle with the same challenge as I do, but hearing their stories of deepening faith, perseverance, and resilience always gives me exactly the boost I need to keep following my God-shaped dream. Thank you, Merit. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, Shelly, such words of kindness from you. I too needed to know that I was not alone in this. And as it turns out, there are a lot of us out here. Bless you, sweet sister, devoted dreamer. Thank you for sharing these words with me today. And unless you're the ad skipping type, and you might be, that's okay, but you probably heard earlier in the show that I am partnering with one of my former guests, Laurel Denise, creator of beautiful handmade jewelry designed to inspire and encourage. So 
I'm doing this in order to connect us devoted dreamers through the wearing of a simple piece of jewelry. And for me, it's going to be one of Laurel's leather bracelets, probably with the word beloved. I haven't totally decided yet, but you can choose from dozens of options she has available at laureldenise.com. And when you go to her website and make a purchase and use the code devoted dreamers, a portion of your purchase supports my work on the podcast. This is kind of a new thing I'm testing out. So if it's something that appeals to you, take Take this chance to go make a purchase in the month of October and support the Devoted Dreamers podcast, support a fellow dreamer, laureldenise.com. And if you're not the jewelry wearing type, but you still want to support the show, um, thank you. Uh, I've got another option for you. You can check out my page at patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash devoted dreamers, where you can make a small monthly contribution towards my work here. I would be so grateful for that if that's something that you in your heart feel you want to do. And if you are looking to connect with other dreamers, we would love to meet you in the Facebook group. It's called the Devoted Dreamers Insiders Group, and you'll find a community of other like-minded women who love Jesus and who believe he's given them a dream to pursue. Come on over and meet us in there. We would so love to meet you. And you can find the show notes for this episode, as always, at meritonsa.com slash podcast slash 131. There you can connect with Anna, find that cute t-shirt she mentioned. So cute. Um, she's also got her habit tracker on there, or you can just sign up to follow her journey as a midwife overseas. That's all I have for today, my friends. I will be back, let's see, next week with another solo episode. But until then, thank you so much for joining me in this conversation. And wherever you are with your God-shaped dreams, may you have the courage to take one step toward their realization today.